I'm your host, Nina, back again with Heather from Live Lean RX Florida, continuing our conversation on all things metabolic. Welcome to the For You Fitness Podcast. We are back with Heather and we're at the Tampa location for Live Lean RX. And today we're gonna be diving into all things metabolic assessment. So we're gonna be starting with the DEXA scan. Heather, tell us what this big giant machine is and what it does. Yeah, so this is the queen of body composition. Okay, so it's a quick six minute x-ray that goes from your head to your feet very, very slowly, quantifying the data as she goes. So it's a low powered x-ray. It's not what you traditionally experience in a clinical setting, like when you break a bone or get sick and need a chest Mm x-ray. She is very low in frequency. Um, so the uh, environmental equivalent, some people say what it's, it's equivalent to what you would experience during a two hour plane flight, um, from the sun in that time. Most people don't know that you get radiation exposure from the sun in that time, but you do because you're closer to the nuclear source of radiation that we call the sun. So be aware of that. Um, also when you travel, when you fly, things like that, your body does become dehydrated. So Mm -hmm. make sure that you hydrate. Um, And your body weight can actually change during travel too, so it's best not to weigh yourself within 48 (laughs) hours after traveling. Don't do it, don't get on the scale. (laughs) Just a little little truth bomb there. So anyway, the decks of very low radiation in six to eight minutes, you'll have a full body snapshot of your body composition from your lean mass, um, your body fat, your bone health, also your visceral fat. Mm. Um, this is very important. Not um, no other method besides, you know, obviously CT or MRI, which are very expensive um, and only available in the hospital. Um, you know, can do this, can quantify the actual visceral fats um, in terms of pounds or inches cubed, as we like to measure it in the medical world. Real quick, give us a scoop on visceral fat. Visceral fat is something uh, that is metabolically active or becomes an organ itself when it's not addressed, when it's highly accumulated in in your um, visceral cavity. Mm -hmm. So around and inside of your organs, it's caused by, you know, sedentary lifestyles, Mm -hmm. um, unbalanced diet, conjunction of the two, um, some kind of um, maybe a side effect from medications or other things. I mean, visceral fat has a lot of... Um, sources, but mostly it's due to the unbalanced lifestyle that people mm-hmm. live. You know, a high abundance un- of unbalanced calories, not enough protein, not moderating their fat and sodium, and sugar, and mm-hmm. carbohydrate. Simple, co- simple carbohydrate content, um, and not being active. Not being active enough to put burn off the energy that mm-hmm. they're putting into their body with the food. Gotcha. So this can cause, you know, um, a high predisposition for secondary illness like type 2 diabetes, hypertension, heart, heart disease, um, prostate and colon cancer in men. I mean, I could go on. The list is huge. So yeah. addressing your uh, metabolic disease risk factor with oh. the quantification of visceral, visceral fat um, from the DEXA scan is actually a helpful tool and uh, one of the main focuses um, of our centers. That's major. So basically that's the unhealthy fat. Yes, right. it's the metabolically active fat that is a contributory to secondary illnesses. Okay, so this guy does this. Yes. Um, what else? You said bone density. Bone density. Yes. So it is not, I have to be clear, this is not the clinical assessment for bone density. Gotcha. That is a very different study, although very parallel with this. Okay. So the bone density provided uh, from the DEXA is cumulative from your skull to your toes. Mm-hmm. So it's segmented by area. And if you give the report to your physician, they are able to do the translation, the equation to do it from grams per centimeter squared for every region. Okay. Um, but if you are um, concerned about your bone density health and your doctor has given you a prescription Mm -hmm. for your bone density screening analysis, you can give us the prescription and our medical director will sign off on it um, if you're appropriately matched to receive the DEXA scan uh, for composition. We can tack that on, you know, to the body composition analysis with approval from him, but we do need that prescription from your physician ordering the bone density screening, otherwise we cannot tack it on. I think this is great because for a lot of females coming in, they may be worried yes. and concerned about their bone health and to do this scan and then to come back and do it again three months from that point after starting a strength training routine, I mean, do you at see noticeable, uh, uh, 
<laughs> uh, do you do you notice changes? Have you seen? Yes. Okay, talk yes. to me about that. It, it, it depends on the individual, but okay, so the perfect um, example of this is people that go from really high intensity cardio focused routines mm -hmm. solely with very little or to none mm -hmm. um, focus on the strength training factor. You're putting no tension on your skeletal muscle, which indirectly um, strengthens the, the strength of your bones. Mm -hmm. So when you don't provide that tension on the skeleton and you're just eating through it with the cardio activity, your bone density actually suffers. So, you know, our physician kind of, he keeps a, a good eye on that with every follow-up and everything um, to trend both bone health factor, uh, risk factors and, um, you know, how it's trending. What direction is it trending? You know, sure. if it goes too far into the, into the lows, we ask what's up. Hey, are you really lifting weights or are you lying? Kind of thing. Are yep. you really hitting the treadmill for 20 minutes mm -hmm. or are you doing two hours? You know, kind of thing. Those, mm -hmm. those questions. But it's really helpful to kind of watch the trends go up. Yes. You know, and it's encouraging because some, some women do receive, uh, you know, a screening from their doctors that says they have low bone mineral density, but, you know, out, over time and lifestyle habit changes, you know, they can see it go up. It may Absolutely. not be dramatic, sure. but yes, it, the possibility is there awesome. for some individuals. Now, it's not a guarantee. Correct. Everybody's different. Everybody's yeah. different. Metabolic factors, disease factors, genetics. I mean, I could go on down different rabbit holes right. that, that yes. you know, influence that. But yep. as an overall tool for total bone density assessment, the DEXA will provide that on your report. It's just not the clinical one. So we cannot provide, you know, clinical T scores to your T spine or mm -hmm. your L spine. I'm sorry. Um, or your um, dual femurs. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's categorized by region and area. Okay. So this queen reads visceral fat, full total bone density, mm -hmm. um, and then lean mass and fat mass. Right. So cutaneous and visceral. And that's, is that by region? How does that yes. look? So it, when you come and experience a DEX or if you've ever seen, you know, a video on our website, mm -hmm. you'll notice that it goes very slowly. You know, this scan arm, there's, it, it's a lot of our clients joke that you're kind of like Xerox copying yourself because mm -hmm. that's what it really feels like. Mm -hmm. So the deck says a low powered x-ray that kind of looks like um, a big table. You know, it's about 10 feet long um, and it's got a padded center. So when you lay on it, it's not super hard. Um, you lay on it for six to eight minutes and take a nap um, while an arm moves overhead very slowly scanning you kind of like a Xerox copier. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like too. So you lay here on your back with your eyes closed, laying completely still, um, relaxing, taking a nap, meditating for about six to eight minutes, and she does the work. She'll mm -hmm. stop, you know, slow little intervals here and just scan you back and forth by region, evaluating your arms, your trunk, your mm -hmm. legs, the difference between it and the lean mass and fat tissue and bone density of each area. And for those of you listening on audio, if you want to see what the DEXA looks like for yourself, find this podcast on YouTube. Okay, so uh, if somebody's coming in, they want to book an appointment for a DEXA scan, mm -hmm. what do they have to do? Or, or do they have to come fasted? Do they have to drink a lot of water? Like, what do you recommend? So in terms of preparation for the DEXA mm -hmm. scan, we obviously ask that people not wear a bunch of metal. Um, obviously, what I'm wearing is fine. You okay. know, zippers, you know, on jeans are okay. We ask that you leave your sequins and your, no, uh, you know, your bedazzled Elvis suits at home because the big hoop <laughs> earrings i can't wear them yeah no you got to take those out but you know anything in this area especially like the spine or the area okay. of like your the majority of your tissue okay. composition leave your sequins at home you know workout clothings are fine no large zippers no sure. big buttons no large print you know anything that's going to become an artifact and make the dexa you know a, a little harder for it to read okay so try to avoid you know any large metal items um, what you're wearing what I'm wearing okay. is completely fine okay. you do not have to fast for the DEXA although okay. you do want to keep your practices consistent from scan to scan gotcha so if you ate to a small breakfast two hours prior to your first scan then you can do the same going forward okay um, you want to kind of keep your stomach contents the same so that we have like an accurate baseline okay. so that way if you don't do anything crazy like fast Fast for 72 hours and then do, then do your next DEXA scan. It may not be directly in comparison on an equal playing field. Okay. Um, very marginally small, but still, sure. you know, be consistent. 
Um, as far as like actually getting to the DEXA scan, though, mm -hmm. it's a little bit of a process because it is x-ray radiation. Mm -hmm. It does require sign-off from our physician. Mm -hmm. So the screening form is on the website. It's a quick 21-question survey about your health, you know, a screening for pregnancy in females. Um, you know, do you have any disorders that prevent you from laying on your back mm -hmm. for more than six minutes without getting up? You know, just things that we have to be cautious of when, when dealing with x-ray radiation. Um, so you have to fill that out every time, sure. you know, the physician sees it, signs off on it, provides us the orders, and then you're good to go. But you can fill out that, that screening form, book your appointment online, and then during that process on the back end, you know, we're reviewing your intake and waiting for the physician orders. If we need further information, we will reach out to you. So make sure you guys check out the Live Lean RX website, and I'm going to put that in the show notes if you have any further questions about that too. So it's a pretty non-invasive test. Right. Simple. Yeah. Right? You don't have to disrobe for it. Like I said, I mean, you just don't want to come in with a suit of armor. Right. So come in with your, you know, pajamas or your comfy clothes on. Take a six-minute nap. You gotcha. know, the report is instant. So that is your medical record. You do get to keep that, mm -hmm. you know, on the day of the assessment. Um, and it is pretty layman friendly. You can go through the terms and everything and kind of okay. decipher it to yourself. Bring it back to your health professionals, your trainers. Nina knows how to read them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and our physician also provides commentary on the secure digital dashboard portion mm -hmm. of, of the report. So gotcha. um, that is helpful as well. And our physician is always available for further consult if you have questions to address. Perfect. Easy peasy, guys. All right, so that wraps up our deck. So, so we're going to be moving on to the Fit 3D scan. Now on to the Fit 3D scan. So Heather, walk us through the process of this guy. Okay, so this is our 3D infrared image camera. It does 360 degree 3D images of your body as the base spins around, obviously in 360 degree motion. Very mm -hmm. slow. It's not like a tilt a whirl that's going to throw you off against the wall. For those of you tuning in on our audio channel, the Fit 3D laser scan is a 3D infrared laser camera system with a spinning base that's about 7 feet tall. You will do this scan in your bra and underwear or just your underwear, something tight to you because obviously the way that this works is it will obtain your measurement circumference around from your neck to your calves. Um, so you want your clothing to be as tight to you as possible. You don't okay. want anything blousey, you know, kind of like my polo um, or anything on like your, your jacket's tight around right. your waist. You don't want anything that looks you larger than what you really are because mm -hmm. you want these measurements to be accurate. Mm -hmm. So during that time, it also evaluates your posture and your balance. It's got a balance plate in there. So we can actually show you over time, you know, how the 4 you Fitness uh, methods are working for your core strength, your mm -hmm. balance, your posture, you know, mm -hmm. as your body is getting stronger in between your DEXA scans mm -hmm. or coinciding with your DEXA scans. Mm -hmm. they're, they're completely kind of different metrics. Use this for body composition analysis. Um, we use this as a method to keep people on track and keep them off of the scale in between their DEXA mm -hmm. scans because the, the, the scales we both know, it doesn't directly reflect, reflect progress. So, that's where this guy comes in. There's no radiation. Again, a 3D infrared image camera. You can use it once a week, once a month, once sure. every two weeks, whatever. Your professional, whatever. If you have a client, sure. you know, you can tell them, okay, I want it every two weeks or yeah. every week. Just go visit Live Lean. Mm -hmm. Do this. It's literally 40 seconds. You have your own private dashboard. Um, it, it takes about five minutes for that to upload and you can train your data. Super fast. Yeah, I have the app right now. It's it's a 3D avatar. It could be very disturbing for some people to see their image, but at the same time, it's creating awareness. Yeah. And as a For You Fitness client, we would recommend that you would do this every four weeks because again, you're keeping track of your progress. Mm -hmm. And we, like you just said, the scale does not reveal mm -hmm. the entire truth, but an image does. Exactly. It shows you the inches from your thighs to your forearms to your calves. I mean, we're talking pretty much neck well, down. Yes, exactly. Right? And to that point, just to expand on that, yes, it is a 3D avatar, but mm -hmm. it's not a generic avatar. It is you in 3D scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's quite interesting. So you will see everything. Yes. <laughs> every bump, every every curve, ladies. But again, just bringing awareness to what's going on without having to step on the scale and um, 
just again awareness it's parallel to the dexa they're complementary to each other but they each have different roles in the lifestyle transformation that we try to teach people simply stated as i said before you know that the scale is not your tell all Mm -hmm. you know if you're building lean mass Mm -hmm. through for your fitness programs and you're improving your your nutrition um you're not going to see that scale go down dramatically as you would expect um, but the main difference is, you know, your inches, your circumference, like how are your clothes fitting? So that's where this guy comes into play. And most people find that even during a 30 day transformation, you can lose three inches for most people. And sometimes you lose half an inch. It just really depends on how much you have to give up in the first place. If there's anything that you get out of what Heather just said, it's that it's the scale. Stop, stop, just stop. Now this does have a scale. Yes, base. correct. But this does, but your bathroom scale. Yeah. So another helpful tip just going back to the DEXA is that you can compare the DEXA's weight because it weighs you, quantifies your mm-hmm. tissue in the body. So mm-hmm. even if you're wearing clothing, it doesn't weigh you like a scale. It only sees your body tissue. So the actual total mass on your report is your weight, is your total tissue quantification. So you can actually compare that number to mm-hmm. your bathroom scale at home and yes. most people find out that their scale is like five above or yes. five below. So yes. as long as you have that method of reference yeah. to track your progress at home, you can kind of have a healthy relationship with that that way. Actually, a great tool for understanding your body composition. All right, so we're now gonna move on to the RMR assessment. So if you're one of our audio listeners, you can check out what's going on right now in the room as we're recording this very segment, seeing the equipment, the technology, my calorimeter, the chair that you'll be sitting in during the resting metabolic rate, and the room that you'll be testing in on our YouTube channel. On to the RMR assessment. All right, we got a bunch of techie stuff going on. Heather. Yes. Tell me what's going on. Okay, so this is a resting metabolic rate analysis, as we mentioned um, earlier. You know, this is an indirect calorimeter. So basically, you would sit in a chair. You know, you you need to be completely fast for this test. I know that was a question for the DEXA. So preparation for the DEXA. Um, But the preparation for the RMR, as well as the VO2 max, is going to be six hours of fasting, no food, caffeine, or exercise six hours prior. So nothing after midnight, just water. Vital medications are allowed. So if you are taking something that, you know, helps your thyroid or your heart or your insulin, stuff like that, stuff that keeps your metabolism running, we want you on those medications unless told by your practitioner not to take them for this assessment. So we do that assessment too, to kind of test for um, therapeutic doses and stuff of Synthroid and other medications that we need to review metabolic health in its state without the help. Okay, so for all other people, um, six hours of fasting, no food, exercise, caffeine, um, nicotine too, if I didn't mention that, okay. and exercise for at least six hours prior. You come, you can come in your pajamas if you want to. Okay. Yep. We have this recliner right behind Nina and you're right here. It's very comfortable. Um, you can just kind of hang out and, um, you know, watch your favorite TV show yeah. on your phone, listen to a podcast. It's true. Yep. <laughs> um, read a book on your Kindle, mm-hmm. just nothing that's going to overly excite you um, or cause your respirations to be higher than what they would in a totally chill state. So no working, no political debates on Facebook, no fighting with the spouse. Okay. Okay. So don't, just don't those text are, Those are all literal <laughs> true things that have happened. <laughs> just don't text anybody. <laughs> just no. Yeah. This is you just zen yeah. out in chill time. Okay. You're investing in your health by right. having this test done. Make it as accurate as possible. Got it. Okay. So moving on, this right here is our hygienic, um, disposable kit that we use, our meta breather. Okay. So as I explained before, it's a lot like snorkeling in the way that your nose is going to be sealed off and you're just going to be breathing through your mouth. Now most people find out whether they're a nose breather or a mouth breather through this test, so don't worry. We'll give you proper breathing instructions mm-hmm. as, as we kind of touched on you know, earlier with that and the struggles that people have with regulating their breathing. Yes. That is why we check on you, you every three to five minutes just to catch you in those cycles to break them. Absolutely. So that way you're not here you know, for 20 minutes breathing inappropriately mm-hmm. and then we have to do the whole thing again because mm-hmm. that's not comfortable for anybody. I did it. <laughs> I did that. Yeah. I was a heavy breather. I wanted to hear my own breath, but that totally threw everything off, so I had to do it again. It's a natural response, and yes. that's one of the reasons why we keep so many close tabs on you during that time yeah. to make sure that you're breathing appropriately because your natural response to oxygen deprivation 
is to breathe more. Mm -hmm. So this is a the hygienic kit that we have. You know, you can see the little styrofoam nose clips here and the plastic hose. This gets thrown away through every use, so it's not transferred from client to client. Uh, yeah, very hygienic. Yes. We're all about not yeah. sharing uh, any unhealthy germs there. And I would say the most uncomfortable part about this whole thing is just the nose clip. It is That's a little it. tight, but you can That's take it. it off and hold your own nose at yeah. any time. Oh, there. You can, and most people are scared to do that yeah. because they don't want to mess up the test, but yeah. I, uh, I promise you, yeah. you know, if you take it off for a brief second, yeah. as long as you're holding your nose yeah. the majority of the time and just breathing through your mouth, the calorimeter is going to do its job and catch all of your concentration. Absolutely. Okay, cool. So that's hooked up into this little guy yes. here. So we put, we sit you in the chair, find a comfortable position okay. for you, give you the hose while the calorimeter is doing its thing to warm up and calibrate give you the hose so that you can practice breathing through it with mm -hmm. a couple of different breathing exercises so mm -hmm. that you can get used to the feeling. Mm -hmm. And then we plug it in, let it get used to you, and after it's calibrated to you, then the test actually starts from there. So about 15 to 25 minutes on average, just okay. depending on your breathing pattern. We do watch you routinely. And then, you know, we kind of watch in here and watch on the screen, you know, any fluctuations in your oxygen to CO2 concentrations and seeing where you're at with your breathing pattern to see if you're truly relaxed and chill or if it's lying to us. Yeah. yeah. So this is kind of the tell all, you know, we can go in here and there's a couple of different ways we can tell. We can look at the respiratory exchange rate concentration between okay. the oxygen and the CO2. Okay. Um, that tells us a lot about where you are. But that RER, that respiratory exchange rate, can also tell us a little bit about how your metabolism is burning energy on the day of the test, whether you're a fat burner or a sugar burner. That is huge. Do you know if you burn fat for energy, or do you know if you burn sugar for energy? Do you even know? <laughs> you, <laughs> you don't, don't know until know. you take the test. Yeah, if you're not testing, you're guessing. That's yes. our motto. Yes. But you know, you can also change those values too. Just because you're burning 100% sugar on the day of the test, you know, with mm -hmm. a couple of different lifestyle switches. Mm -hmm. That's why we do the lifestyle assessment and the evaluation right. with every client. Is you know, we like to get to know you so that we can provide those recommendations and show you, okay. Well, because you're deficient in protein, your body's burning more sugar because mm. you're eating more sugar and, you know, you know, in, in the terms of, you know, macronutrient balance. Or maybe you're just over-exercising for the amount of nutrients that you're getting and you're going to be up in that high sugar burn zone. Right. So, multiple yeah, factors yes, to multiple, consider. Yeah. Multiple factors that, again, like I said, the, you know, the accuracy and the recommendation really lie in the lifestyle assessment that you know, the interview that we take the time to conduct with each client. Absolutely. So how often would you recommend that somebody get this test? A normal healthy metabolism, you can do it twice a year. Okay. So, you know, uh, on baseline, you know, maybe in six months and then maybe again around the nine to 12 month mark. Gotcha. You know, but if okay. you have some kind of metabolic challenges to where it's a little slower, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it through the DEXA. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can kind of use the same data depending on the transition that you've made. So if you've lost some fat and gained, you know, maybe five pounds of lean muscle mass, then your arm are probably going to change significantly. Gotcha. So we can use the data from your initial one and do the, you know, fluctuations based on that. Or if you've added medications or supplements that increase your metabolic rate, you know, we're definitely going to want to take a look at the performance because that does matter as well. Yeah. So there are a lot of factors, again, very individualized, but for the average healthy person, maybe two to three times a year. Gotcha. So with this knowledge from the RMR assessment, from there, a person can change their habits or should you Absolutely. Know, uh, think about what's going on with their lifestyle. Yeah. It's understanding, it's educating through science, sure. which is my motto. Yep. You know, that's the whole premise of these centers, is to educate through science, making science simplified so that the general populace can understand, but actually hack their bodies like a scientist. Mm -hmm. Like, who wouldn't want to do that, you know? And that's one of the biggest things that I can say, um, you know, about people that come in here like learning fad diets and things like that. Mm -hmm. It gets you through the moment, but it doesn't get you there for life. Mm -hmm. So learn the science. Take the time that you would invest in learning a fad diet and learn the simplified science behind your metabolic needs. Heather, are there any other metabolic tests that say you have an actual, like an athlete come in to see you mm -hmm. besides the RMR, the DEXA, and, you know, the Fit3D scan? you know, testing their levels of endurance, their lung capacity, what is yeah. that? Well, behind me, it's the VO2 max. So we're gonna go uh, into that on another segment. Yes, a whole are. segment and so we have a lot of fun things planned. For oh, that. yes, we do. <laughs> Starting this one right here. Uh, okay, <laughs> just kidding. It's very exciting stuff. 
very scientific stuff. But again, it's simplified so you can understand it and you can understand how you know the exercise component, your nutrition component, your body composition component, these guys are all interconnected and they all influence each other. Mm -hmm. On that note, create awareness around what's going on, okay? Come here, come to Live Lean Rx, get some tests done if you haven't already done so, and learn more about yourself. Thank you.